I am Deidre Banks and welcome back to Words of Power, where we are delving into the Word of God scripture by scripture. Today I want to talk to you about John 3, 1 and 2. God is calling us, many of us, to rise up in the teacher anointing or calling that is upon our lives. He is calling teachers and raising them up in this hour. The fivefold ministry was given to the church to equip the body of Christ and to help us go forth for the work of ministry. God is really raising up teachers in this hour like never before. Let's go ahead and start with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you. We bless you, Lord, and we lift you up. We magnify your name on high. We thank you, Father God, for leading us and guiding us into all truth. We thank you for the call and anointings upon our lives. And we thank you, God, for giving us greater mantles in this hour to go forth like never before. We thank you for making every crooked way straight and for leading us on this path that's the narrow gate that we are to walk through and the path that is less traveled. We thank you, Father God, that as we're going this way, it may seem like we're going through the rocks and through the terrain, through the travail. But Father God, we thank you that you are leading us and you're beginning to show us as our heads are down and we're focused just on to keep going, you are going to lift us up and we are going to begin to see exactly what you've been designed to show us all this time. So we thank you, Father God, as our eyes are opened and our eyes are receiving the word that you have for us and the calling upon our lives, that we are going forth in great power like never before. Help us to decrease so that you may increase in our lives and so people will see you and glorify our Father in heaven. We thank you, Lord, for the prayer and the reading of the word that is about to go forth. You are with us. You are leading and guiding us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. John 3, 1 and 2. Now here, Nicodemus is going out at night to meet Jesus, and we're going to see what they talk about and Jesus operating in this teacher anointing. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Now, Nicodemus was a member of the Sanhedrin, which was a ruling body in ancient Israel. So these are Pharisees or religious people. Verse 2, this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these things that you do unless God is with him. Now, what Nicodemus is saying is also confirmed in Mark 15, Mark 16, 17 through 18. Mark 16, 17 through 18. So those that are followers of Christ should have miracles, signs, and wonders that show that God is with us. And so Nicodemus, the people around as well, knew that Jesus was a teacher, those that received the truth, because of the work that Jesus did. It was a testimony that God was with him. Amen. Now let's read Mark 16, 17 through 18, so we can see the promise that's for all believers. And then we're going to go hone in on the teacher anointing. Amen. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will not, by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Amen. So these signs are for all believers in Christ, disciples of the Lord. We are to walk in miracle signs and wonders as the Lord wills. He gives us the power to walk in this assignment to do miracle signs and wonders, to be his disciples. He draws all men to his bosom that he has to draw us. Amen. Once we're drawn, we receive that calling. We are to walk in miracle signs and wonders. And that's something we're going to pray for later, that we would walk in that in the body of Christ, because it's a sign to the unbelievers that God is who he says he is. Amen. So let's say, look, so Nicodemus said to Jesus, we know that you are a teacher from God. So let's talk about first the teacher and the calling of that. So Ephesians 4, 11 through 13 says, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Amen. So teachers, as you all know, is part of the fivefold ministry. For why? For the equipping, verse 12, of the saints for the work of ministry. So this fivefold ministry is not to glory for ourselves, it's to equip the saints for the work of the church, for the edifying the body of Christ. We are to edify one another. And in Romans 12 and 10, it also says that we are to honor one another. Amen. 
verse 13, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So the fivefold ministry hopes to equip the church for the work of ministry, equip the saints to edify the body of Christ till we come into the complete unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Amen. So that's until Jesus comes back one day. That's what the work of the fivefold ministry is. Amen. And a teacher is one of them. So in the Greek, there are several different words for teacher. In Strong's Concordance, is kalo didis kalos. I know I'm probably not saying that in perfect Greek. Forgive me, those of you who are Greek scholars. But it's kalo dida skelos. K a l o d i d a s k a l o s. I'm gonna spell that one more time. K a l o d i d a s k a l o s. So, and this means teacher of good things. That word in the Greek means teacher of good things. And so God, Jesus, the Son of God, is a teacher of good things, the good news of the gospel. And to know God is to know his goodness, for he is good. Amen. And we declare his goodness to the saints and to the world. Amen. And so as a teacher of the gospel, those of you that are called to go forth in that ministry, we're teaching the good things of God. That doesn't mean that we don't teach the fullness. All things are good. Even the word that's given for correction is for good, amen, so that we can live a good and acceptable life before our Heavenly Father. Avoid the pitfalls. My people perish for lack of knowledge, the scripture says. And so it's a good thing to know the things of God, amen. And that's all the things of God. We want to balance the warnings uh, as God gives them, yes, release them. But we want to balance being bent towards a warning or bent towards encouraging because you can easily go too much towards one side or the other where it's our flesh or our soulish realm that's giving us those things and then where it's not coming from God. How do you know it's from God? The Holy Spirit speaks inside of you. And as you ask God, seek my heart, Lord. Take out anything that's not like me or take out anything that's not like you, and saying that to the Father, he's going to help you see if there's an error in the word that you are teaching, the word that you are giving to others. And he will help you correct through his word, through visions, dreams, through wise counsel, godly counsel. And so you'll know a lot of it is opening ourselves up and asking God and he'll show us. It's asking him and he'll show us if there's an area where we have gotten bitter in a way and where we're over teaching it's something that god is not a part of amen romans 1 and 16 says i am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power we do that again i am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of god that brings salvation to everyone who believes first to the jew then to the gentile so the word of god is powerful this is the good things. This is what the teacher is using to teach the gospel is the word of God. The gospel that is taught from the church, it has to come from the infallible word of God. That is our source of truth. And we have to stick to that. In the end times that we are in, there are false teachers that are rising, false apostles, false prophets, false intercessors that are teaching fallacies and they do not line up with the word of God. You know they're fallacies because they do not line up with the word of God. God does not see, speak with a forked tongue. He is not divided. The word of God and what comes from the apostles' mouth, the pastors, the prophets, evangelists, teachers, it must be from the word of God. And when we speak through the utterance of the Holy Spirit, that should line up with the word of God because the Holy Spirit speaks truth. He is God. And the word of God, which is living and breathing, is going to agree with the Holy Spirit. Amen. James 3 and 1 gives us a warning. Although, yes, there's those that are called to be teachers, there is a caution for them in how we should walk as teachers. It says, My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. So it's not something that we should seek out ourselves. But if you have been called, go forth. I want to go ahead and pray over us that we are operating in the miracle signs and wonders that God desires that we walk in 
and that we will recognize these false prophets that are in our midst. Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the callings that are upon our lives. So we know, Lord, that the gifts that you have given us are without repentance. We thank you, Father God, that you are anointing us and that you are giving us a, an assignment. You've already predestined us. We know that you've already called us. But even as we're walking through the pages of our lives, you are giving us new assignments for this season, Father God. Lord, we ask that you open our eyes to see and open our ears to hear what you would have us doing in this moment. We pray for those teachers that you are raising up in this hour, that they will be equipped by you. They will be taught by you, Father God, that you will lead and guide them into all truth, that they will be studiers of your word. We pray for you to infill them, to develop them. We pray, Father God, that you will lead us and guide us where to go for these uh, the teachings that you are teaching us. Yes, and I believe that this is a place of source, sound doctrine and teaching. And there'll be other places as well that you are infusing your people with. We are a body of many members. We thank you, Father God, for the calling on those that are pastors, apostles, and evangelists. Father God, and the prophets, Father God, you're raising them up as well, Lord. We thank you for the fivefold ministry that is, is at it as it is going forth like never before. We thank you, Lord, as we are moving with you in you and through you. We thank you, Father God, that you are just moving mountains on our behalf and you're opening up doors for us that no man can close and you're closing doors that no man can open. We pray, Father God, that you will reveal to us if there's any false prophets in our midst, if there are any false prophets uh, that, heaven forbid, that we are connected to, Father God. And we repent if you have shown us this and we have ignored it, Father God, that we have not separate ourselves from the false prophet yes we are to pray for them we pray for them right now father god that you heal their hearts they may be broken hearted may people who once were true prophets and have fallen away we pray for you to encounter them with your love and we forgive them lord if they have deceived us and we ask for forgiveness father god for being deceived by these false prophets we bind every lying tongue every sinister spirit we bind it right now we send it into the hell fire it cannot stand against you, Father God, and what you're trying to do. We speak truth into your people. We speak truth through the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. And we pray for these false prophets that they will turn from their wicked ways, that they will repent, Father God. We just pray for uh, their hearts, Lord Jesus. We know that you turn uh, that the king's heart is in your hand and you turn it, it whichsoever way you desire and that's according to your desire father so it's for you desire we know father god that you desire that no man should perish but there are some ha ah, heaven forbid that will lord jesus but we pray that these false prophets will be encountered by your love that they will be ah, just enveloped father god you're putting your loving arms around them and they we pray lord that you will forgive them father god we stand in the gap praying mercy for them as they're moving in things they do not understand and it's uh, such a dangerous thing father god we just pray and intercede for those Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Herabosi, we pray, Father God, for your miracle signs and wonders to abound in this hour, that the unbelievers will know that you are the one and true ruling God, and that they will know without a shadow of a doubt, just as uh, the disciples, they knew that you were Jesus because of what you've done, and Nicodemus knew, and others knew that followed you, Father God. They knew that Jesus was who he said he was. We pray for that encounter. We pray for that awakening. We pray for that rendering now through the power of the Holy Spirit for people to know now without a shadow of a doubt that you are who you say you are, that there is only one way to enter into the kingdom of heaven, and that's to be repented, and that's to accept your son, Jesus Christ, and believe on him and that we will be saved, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that you're opening the eyes of your precious people. You're opening the eyes of the sinners. You're opening your eyes of those that do not know you, and they are coming in droves. We're praying for that harvest. We're praying for them to come in like never before. So we pray for that, Father God, for the people of God to be awakened. And for those that don't know you, Father God, for their eyes to be opened. Here, see that many will be saved, that the harvest comes in. 
Haribus, you said that the work is plentiful, but the laborers are few. But for us to pray for the laborers to come in. We pray right now, Father God, for the laborers to go forth, for the laborers to come in, for them to move like never before, and then to come into the storehouse to help us with this great, the financial harvest too. Yes, Father God, that the finances are overflowing and they're coming upon us so we can do your work like never before. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy rest upon us. You are a lover of justice and you're moving mightily in this hour. We thank you, God, as we rest in your presence. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen.